exclusive home of the complete 30 for 30 library. Good afternoon, everyone. We'll get started in about two minutes. Two minutes, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, Tulane University uh, for the uh, 2022 Roof Claim American Athletic Conference Football Championship. My name is Chuck Sullivan from the uh, American Athletic Conference office, uh, joined here by Tom Fenstermaker, Ian Applegate from our staff over here on the side. Uh, we are at your service for the uh, next two days here. I um, also want to acknowledge John Heisler and Justin Wilson from the UCF uh, media ops team, uh, and uh, Troy Dannon, of course, from Tulane University. And, uh, Jason Carher, from, uh, who leads the media operations for Tulane. So if there's anything that any of us can do for you this week, please don't hesitate to let us know. Uh, with that, we're happy to welcome Coach Gus Malzahn from UCF. Uh, Coach, congratulations on advancing to the championship game. If you just give some opening remarks, and then we'll open up to questions from the group here. Yeah, first of all, we're very honored to be here uh, playing the championship game against a uh, big-time Tulane team uh, that has a great coach, great players playing on their home field for the second time. Um, you know, I'm real proud of our team getting us here, and uh, we're excited about playing tomorrow. OK, if you have questions for Coach, raise your hand. We'll get a microphone over to you. And we can just ask to, uh, for the uh, courtesy of a coach, just introduce uh, yourself before your question. Moment. I know all the players. This was when we talked to them in spring and preseason about the goal. You're here. Just talk about what they accomplished to get to this moment. Yeah, that, that was uh, the number one goal that uh, our leaders had, our team had, is to make it here and play for a championship. And uh, so the fact that we're here, um, you know, there's uh, I'm, I'm real proud of our guys. Um, you know, they've earned the right to be here and got a championship game tomorrow. Coach Jason Beatty with the Orlando Sentinel. This is a rematch, like you said, but is it dangerous to overthink rematches, maybe try to do something different, or what goes into game planning for something like yeah, this? Yeah, you know, I think it's a championship game. It really doesn't matter whether we played uh, before or not. I mean, it's, it's winner take all. Uh, both teams have earned the right to get here. We are familiar with each other. There's no doubt that we've not just played each other, but we've played each other recently. But, uh, you know, they're a great team, and, uh, you know, we're excited to play them. 
Uh, Jude Papillon, Tulane Hullabaloo. Are y'all doing the same things uh, in terms of routine as y'all's last matchup here? Yeah, uh, pretty much. Uh, we're not staying at the same hotel. We're staying a little bit different. And, but, uh, you know, at least we're familiar with being here. I think that definitely helps, too. Uh, Mark Kaplinger, also with the Tulane Hullabaloo. Um, what can you tell us about what you've seen out of Michael Pratt and, and from this Tulane offense in general? Yeah, you can tell. I mean, I've been very impressed with him even last year. He's a tough guy. Um, you know, he has led his team uh, to a lot of wins. Uh, he can run. Uh, he can throw it. You can tell he's confident. He's a confident quarterback, and, you know, he's a big guy too. Darren Stoltz, this West too. You've talked about how much you've been focusing on games week to week, but now with what's ahead of you, how do you focus on championship and a New Year's Six Bowl at the same time? We, we got our hands full tomorrow. I mean, the, the only thing that's on our mind is this game. You know, we'll worry about that afterwards. Um, like I said, I mean, this is one of the better teams, I think, in college football, and we're playing on their home field. So, you know, we, don't, we won't be thinking about anything else but them. Sharif Ashak, WDSU-TV in New Orleans. I know you guys are a tight-knit you know, fraternity when it comes to coaches. The job that Willie Fritz has done the last two years, what do you think about what he's done in this conference for this university, going from 2-10 and 10 to 10-2? Ten and two? You know, he's got a great reputation as a, as a big-time coach, you know, even before he got here. And, of course, last year we played, and I think they only won two games. We got through playing them, and they were so well coached, and, and they were a really good team. And I knew they were going to improve, uh, but now here they are. And, and you know, he, he won the uh, – which is much deserved the conference coach of the year. And I think he's up for the national coach of the year. I mean, I, the job he's done, it would be hard to, to top that. We know John Rice uh, has the hamstring from last week. I, we heard you in the media this week saying he's going to give it a go. Can you update us on Friday how he is doing heading into this game? Every day he's, he's felt better. He's practiced. He's taken every snap like he would. He hadn't missed anything. Uh, you know, he's been managing that thing for a while anyway. So, uh, you know, I think that's a good thing. This is a championship game. I mean, so uh, he'll be ready to go. So in the last five games, I believe, Four out of the last five, you've had to play another quarterback. And both your other quarterbacks have played the four games. I know you want to try to maintain the red shirt for both. So what is the plan if John Rice can't go the full game? Yeah, I mean, uh, we'll, we'll do whatever it takes to win. I mean, that's a championship game, and that's what, uh, you know, we've geared up for all year. Defensively, Coach, the last time these, you guys played them, you didn't have Jeremiah Jean Baptiste or Devon Wilson. How much is how big is it that they're going to be back on defense? Yeah, those are two of our defensive leaders, and to have them back is uh, a big shot in the arm, especially how good this team is on offense. I mean, they got uh, the player of the year and the running back. He's phenomenal. Their offensive line's really good. Their quarterback's good. They've got receivers that are very talented. So to have those two guys back for us is, uh, is really good. Coach, if this was two years from now, this game would be, you know, deciding who gets to go to the college football playoff with the news we had earlier this week. So how big is that for the sport? How excited are you to see the new 12-team playoff coming in a couple years? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a long time coming. I wish it would have been, you know, four or five years ago. It's best for college football. It's best for the fans and everything that goes with that. Other questions for Coach? Coach, just uh, tell, tell us, talk to us a little bit about uh, two-lane running back Ty J. Spears. I know he's really gone off the last couple weeks, had really excellent games. Uh, how difficult do you think it's going to be for the defense tomorrow to try to corral him? Yeah, you have to gang tackle. He has great lateral quickness. He can bounce things out. He's got very good speed. Uh, the first guy, you know, breaks tackles too. The first guy usually has a hard time tackling him. So, you know, and, and they've been really committed to getting him the ball in you know, the last two weeks. So we expect the same thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, that's, a, that's a big challenge, a big challenge for our defense. To be here playing for a championship in year two, how does that fit into your plan for what you hoped and could see and what you can see in the future? Yeah, this is a program that expects to, to be in championship games when I took the job, and they've been in a lot before I got here. And so second year, I think we're right on track. Obviously, it's a big game tomorrow, but uh, our program is going in the right direction and has a really, really bright future. Coach, back here in the back by the cameras. I, this is the biggest game for a lot of your players that they've ever played in their careers. How do you keep them focused that this is just another game because that's how you're going to have to treat it in order to win? Yeah, um, you, you know, we, we do have some of our seniors that actually won this game before, and I think that's helped, and they've been able to kind of talk to other players about, 
you know, what it takes and, and everything. So I think that's really helped. But, uh, you know, our guys, are they understand this is a huge game, um, and uh, they're looking forward to it. Coach, also back here by the camera, talk about the atmosphere you're anticipating in this being one of the, probably the biggest games to ever be played on Tulane's campus. Yeah, um, you know, we expect it to be a great atmosphere, there's no doubt. I mean, anytime you're playing for a championship, I mean, you, you've got to expect that, you know, it's going to be a, uh, you know, electric type atmosphere. Uh, you know, that's what we expect, and we're, we're hoping we have quite a few of our fans here, too. Is, were there any moments this season? Uh, I mean, I know there was a you know disappointing loss at ECU. The guys had to regroup from there. What did you kind of see? At what point would this team really come together where you really felt uh, this was a championship uh, level type team? Yeah, we, we knew we had a talented team coming this season. But anytime you have 16 transfers, the dynamics of everything in the new age of college football. Uh, so we had some ups and downs throughout the season. I mean, this is a real conference. I mean, every game you have to bring your lunch. And, uh, you know, for us to get here through the ups and downs, I mean, you know, that's, uh, that's a really a special thing. Coach, after you lost Navy and then after a, a very close game to, you know, your rivals USF, what have you learned about your team in these last two weeks? Yeah, um, you know, they're, they're very resilient. Um, you know, it was a tough loss at Navy, there's no doubt. Had some opportunities, you know, we, we played two quarterbacks. And then, of course, last week, I mean, we were up big, and then they came back and actually took the lead. And the whole season was on the line, and, you know, everyone knew it. And the way they responded at the end, stopping them, and then we drove the field and scored a touchdown at the end. And, you know, that was really – that's hard to do in those type of situations. So I think we've got a battle-tested team. What's the plan for your players tonight? Will they be able to enjoy any of the New Orleans festivities, or will they be confined to their hotels? What's the what's the game plan? <laughs> no, we're not getting distracted. I'll tell you that we're uh, we're going to do our same routine, and we're going to have bed check about ten thirty. We're going to get up, and have our normal meetings, and no, there won't be any festivities. Uh, Chrissy Freud, Sports Illustrated. How different are Mikey Keene and John Rice Palmy as quarterbacks, and what do you feel like they bring to the table, and does that affect the game plan at all? Depending. Yeah, on you know, we've really kept the same game plans. You know, when we we played them, I mean, obviously John Rice can really run, and, and but Mikey runs, uh, uh, you know, sufficient enough. Uh, but you know, really, we don't change our offense that much as far as um, you know what's called. Okay, thank you all. Thank you.
Okay, joined now by Tulane head coach Willie Fritz. And again, same routine uh, as before. If we just uh, raise your hand uh, after the opening statement and uh, introduce yourself to coach for questions. Uh, coach, congratulations on advancing to the championship game. Thank you for your hospitality and your group's hospitality here. Uh, if you can just get your thoughts on the upcoming matchup here, and then we'll open up to questions. Well, we're very excited. Uh, this is a huge for uh, Tulane University. We're really proud to represent our city and our university. And, uh, it's really big for our football program and and just looking forward to the game tomorrow. Mark Hoffman here, Tulane um, You won Coach of the Year for the conference. Tajay Spear won Offensive Player of the Year. Can you just kind of talk on that and um, you know, just how you feel about that? Well, you know, the, the coaching award is, is a team award. I know you, you hear everybody say that, and it's true. You know, you got to play good offense, defense, kicking game. Got a bunch of people behind the scenes that do a – Tremendous job for the program, and we're just very proud of Tajay, and he's had a fantastic year. I think he's very, very worthy of that honor. Jude Papion, Tulane Hullabaloo. Uh, what effect has the opportunity to play in this game had on the vibe in the locker room this week? Well, I think it's, you know, obviously the guys got to bounce in their step, but they, you know, to, to win this many games, you got to have that same energy every single week. So. Uh, they've been able to do that, you know, each and every week, bring it. And, you know, we talk about how important preparation is and then, you know, you know, flipping the switch at, at, at game time for three and a half hours and, you know, bringing that energy then. And uh, they've done that week in and week out. And they've, we, we've had excellent practices this week. So looking forward to, to seeing them perform tomorrow. Coach Brandon Heller with Rivals.com. I know last season was a difficult one with the hurricane and relocation and the record. What did you see from that team? Because I know not many guys went into the portal, and, and there's a lot of guys who decided to come back to, to try to reach this point. What did you start to see last year that maybe during the offseason or, or what have you that made you think, you know, this could be a championship-worthy football team? Well, I thought we played hard every single week last year. I, I was really proud of our effort week in and week out. Sometimes you get behind the eight ball, the season's not going the way you want it to, and you start seeing a lot of lack of effort. But our guys played extremely hard throughout the season. And then just, you know, from January on, just the, the work ethic that they've shown uh, has been really impressive. Uh, I've made this comment many times, but I, you know, if I'm in town, I come up here and work for a little while. And, you know, Saturdays and Sundays, I don't know how many times I came up here and the guys were throwing the ball around there in the weight room. They were doing some football related, watching film. You know, so they were very, very dedicated. Sharif Fyshak, WDSU TV. Is it earlier this week you talked about it all coming to fruition? Has it hit you yet that you guys are about to play in a championship game at home in front of all your fans? Yeah, you know, one of the things I'm gonna talk about our guys too, with tonight is having fun and enjoying the moment. And uh, I think that's important, you know, it's uh, you know, this has been a goal, and, and it's happening right now. So, you know, we, we need to make sure we're living in the moment and, and complete the goal. You know, so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's very, very exciting. Gary Smith with the Times Picune, um, the advocate. Prince Pines made the first team. He's a guy that a lot of times offensive linemen, they have to have a rep coming in and he, he seems to have gotten it on merit. What did you think about him getting named first team all conference? Well, I think he's very deserving. I thought he had a fantastic year. He's a, you know, he transferred in and, and got here in the summer and, you know, he's, uh, there's not a whole lot of guys that are 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 330 pounds who can move and he, he's one of them and uh, he was very deserving of that honor. And, and then obviously the, the better year you have, the more guys you get on all conference. I had a guy you know, last year, say he was disappointed and said, you got to win more games. You win more games, you have more guys on all conference. So uh, I, I'm glad they saw, uh, you know, the, the great season that Prince has had for us. Darren Stoltz, for West 2 in Orlando. Uh, it seems like this year the American finally got a little more, I don't know, credit or acclaim from the college football playoff and everything. <coughs> With UCF being one of the teams headed to the Big 12, does that add anything to this championship game or can you keep it compartmentalized? You know, it's uh, they've got a great program, obviously, and we wish them well. Uh, but as you talked about at the beginning of the question, we're just proud to represent this conference. Uh, you know, our, our commissioner talks all the time about it being part of the Power Six. I really believe that. One of the things I try to sell with people coming to our games 
here at Yulman Stadium is, is the opportunity to, you know, be in a great venue, but also see unbelievable football. And from top to bottom, this is a great league, and, and uh, we're proud to represent it. Hudson Miller, WDSU News. Talk about the challenges their quarterback. I know he's kind of had a hamstring injury going on. The challenges that it, he – You, you got to – a report on that or what? No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> just the challenges. I know he had a good game against y'all the first time around. You know, what are you guys going to do different to try to contain him with that running game? Well, he did. You know, one of the things uh, early in the ball game, uh, last time we played him, they really jumped on us. And a lot of it was quarterback run. And uh, he's got great speed, great movement. Uh, you can't just gang up, you know, in the line of scrimmage because he also throws the ball well. We just got to make sure we're fitting everything up properly. There was a few busts that we had, you know, with guys getting out of their gap and uh, did a good job with some quarterback draw. But, uh, you know, without question, that's, uh, that's a, you know, something that we've got to do a great job of is limiting his, effect, his effectiveness running the football. Fan, two-way hollow blue. Can you speak to how Michael Pratt has improved his game this season compared to the past seasons on the team? Well, you know, he, he got hurt in the first game last year and, and uh, really had a hard time practicing throughout the season. You know, it's something we kind of kept under wraps. He had surgery when the season got over. Uh, so he's been healthy. That's been the, the main thing. He's had a great year because he's, he's, he's doing a better job of uh, understanding uh, first down, touchdown, get down, you know, and, and not taking the shots maybe that he took a year ago. Uh, but he's a really smart football player and, uh, he allows us to play 11-on-11 11 11 football with his ability to run. And, uh, and I think he's also a really accurate passer, a very smart uh, football player. Coach, I know last week there was a few different championship game scenarios. Obviously, you know, you're at Cincinnati. you got to win to host it. But the fact that you get to have this rematch with UCF, a team that beat you in your home stadium a few weeks ago, did the guys talk about that? Were they excited about another chance to beat UCF and kind of, you know, Get a little revenge on a, a few weeks ago? You know, I don't think that's, that really had a lot to do with it. But our guys were talked about playing another home game. You know, we had senior day, and, and a couple of the guys in the locker room after we got done, hey, let, let's, let's see if we can come back here and play again. This isn't our last game, you know, playing here at Yeoman Stadium. So, uh, you know, I've always believed, you know, you look back at past successes or, or failures, and you're, you're not living in the present. You're probably not going to be the best you can be. So... We've just, you know, been zeroing in on, you know, UCF. They're a different team from when we played them a few weeks ago, and so are we. Coach, how excited are you to play in front of a sold-out crowd tomorrow, and how much do you think that will impact the game? Well, it's always exciting. You know, I haven't done that here a whole lot at, at Tulane, so we're proud of that. We're, we're, we're happy that the city and the university has gotten behind us, and, uh, you know, there will be a lot of energy. Week in the college football world about you know college football playoff expansion in two years to 12 teams. So right now this game, if it would be two years from now, it'd be for a spot in the playoff. How excited are you for that? And you just talked about Power Six is going to be top six conference championship. That's got to be huge for for Tulane and the American going forward. Well, I think it was long overdue. I think there's a, you see it happen all the time with uh, you know so-called upsets. You know with with every week. You know and and uh, I think there's a lot of teams, universities that are deserving of, of, you know, being able to play for the, you know, the national championship. So I, I'm, I'm glad they, they passed it, and it's, it's happening here in a couple of years. Coach, um, this week you're potentially uh, preparing for two different quarterbacks, John Rice Plumley and Mikey Keene. You know, what are the challenges of preparing for multiple quarterbacks at the same time, and, you know, what are the strengths in, uh, that each quarterback possesses? Well, we talked a little bit about Plumley, you know, being a great runner, but also being, having the ability to throw the football effectively. You know, Mikey Keene can also run, but his, more, his game is a little bit more throwing the football. He played against us last year, you know, started against us, and had a good ball game, and, and uh, I think he started maybe 12, 13 games in his career at UCF, so he's got a lot of ex experience as well. So two fine quarterbacks. They do – they are a little bit different, but, uh, you know, they're both going to run their offense. Thank you.
and the last thing from our corner, if you've not picked up credentials, please do so at the table right over here. Um, otherwise, they will be left at uh, will call tomorrow morning. Uh, if anyone would like to get Commissioner Oresco for a stand-up uh, or one-on-one, -on -one, uh, give us about a half, half an hour before he has another obligation, so please feel free to let me know and be happy to accommodate. Thank you all.